Okay, I wanted to make a quick video on uh, the Trig uh, verifications and proofs day one. I wanted to update some things from last year's video. The big thing you want to start with uh, that you have to know is you have to know these identities that I'm about to put on the board. I'm also going to load these notes obviously on Canvas, so don't feel like you have to write everything down here. So sine squared plus cosine squared theta equals one. Uh, tangent squared uh, theta plus one equals uh, secant squared, and um, uh, <clears throat> cotangent squared theta plus one equals cosecant squared theta, okay? All right, um, if you ever get confused of which ones match up with these other ones, the C and the C, okay? All right, <clears throat> now what you wanna do is you wanna have the various derivations of those, which means if I moved uh, cosine, that would be uh, sine squared, equals one minus cosine squared. If I moved um, sine, it would be cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. Same thing over here, if I moved the tan, it'd be one equals secant squared minus tan squared. If I moved the one, it would be tan squared equals secant squared minus one, okay? This one, the same thing, move the cotan, all right? Cosecant squared minus uh, cotan squared. Uh, move the cotangent, okay? Um, I'm sorry, move the one, so it would be cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta minus one, okay? So you want to have an idea of those. Have those written out. When you start your summative, have those written out, okay? All right? Let me make sure we got that in the screen, okay? All right? <clears throat> so that, that's going to be important. Now, as you do these trig proofs and verifications, a couple things you want to keep in mind here to help you, all right? Number one, um, sometimes you may need to write in terms of sine, cos uh, write sine and cosine. So like tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is, is cosine over sine. Secant is one over cosine. Cosecant is one over sine. A couple things, some sort of some tricks to do. Uh, eliminate like trig functions diagonally. If you have multiplication and you have the same one, you can eliminate it. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, get a common denominator. When you're dividing fractions, flip uh, the fraction on the right and then multiply. Something else we did uh, before uh, was something called the opposite switch, where if you needed to switch the identity around, you, you basically took out a negative one and flipped those around. Okay, something else you can do. If you have an addition up top and one trig function in the bottom, you can split these, okay? And then use your identities. And here's what you have to do with those identities. Keep in mind, you want to make things simpler. You don't want to insert more terms into the problem if necessary, okay? You want to avoid that. You want to put less. And once you go into those, okay, don't feel like you, you have to go back again. You're, you're trying to do that just once, okay? So I want to walk through some problems, okay? So uh, for instance, on this one, I would want to convert to one over sign. This would be one over cosine. This would be cosine over sine, okay? All right, this multiplies. Nothing can eliminate here, but I got sine theta, cosine theta, minus cosine theta over sine theta. Now, what you should ask yourself here, okay? All right, what you should ask yourself is what operation do I have going on, okay? What operation is taking place, okay? In this case, it's subtraction of a fraction. Well, what do I do in that case? Get a common denominator. Well, this one would be missing a cosine, and this would be missing cosine. Now, what I can do is because I have a common denominator, I can now push this result together. So this is one minus cosine squared over sine theta, cosine theta. Now, if I go back to my trig identities, I have that one available. That is going to be sine squared theta, okay? All right, now. You can either know that if I cross off one, I'll have it one sine up there and one cosine there, or if you need to write it out, sine theta, sine theta, because that's what that is squared, sine theta, cosine theta, okay? Cross those off, so I'm left with sine over cosine, which we know is tangent, okay? And these are gonna take some practice, but you'll, you'll start to see some success with them, okay? All right, second one I wanna go over. Okay, this one, I'd have one over cosine. This would be cosine over sine. This is still just minus sine, okay? Now, 
I do have this diagonal deal where I can cross that off. So I got one over sine minus sine. Okay, so once again, what operation do I have going on? Fractions. Let's make that a fraction. So this one would need sine of theta on top and bottom. Okay, so I got one minus sine squared over sine. Okay, well, what's one minus sine squared? If you go back to your identities, it's cosine squared. All right, now, a lot of different answers that you could have here. Okay, all right, so because basically this is cosine, cosine over sine. Okay, all right, you can do cosine, and cosine over sine would be cotan. Okay, if you wanted to, I would have also accepted cosine squared and cosecant. Okay, because that's what one over sine is. Okay, either answer is acceptable. Okay, all right, so what you want to try to do is you want to pause your video and you want to work on these two, the answers are in Canvas, okay? I'm going to move on with the instruction, though. All right, now this one, what I want to do, okay, I want to be very careful here, okay? I want to um, uh, replace this, okay? That is going to be cosine squared, okay? This I can replace also with cotangent squared, all right? So since I had the squared stuff, I want to see if I can replace that. Now, what this symbol right here is, is division. So I got cosine squared divided by cotangent squared. Okay, so cosine squared divided by, and so I don't wanna replace the trig identity. I just wanna rewrite this as cosine squared over sine squared. So what do I have? I have division of fractions, but what do I do? I flip the second fraction and I multiply. So what's going to happen here? You cross those off, I'm left with sine squared. Okay. Now, in class, in the notes, I went over how to do uh, this problem. I want to go over one of the ones I would like you to try just so you understand. Okay. Now, this, I don't want to substitute for this. I've got this as one term. Let's leave that for now. This is what I want to substitute. If I look at my, um, at my, my trig things, my trig identities, sine squared, this would be cosecant squared. Okay, so I'm not gonna ch I'm not gonna mess with this, okay? Because that's a one term. This one is the one I gotta simplify. So what does this mean? Secant squared divided by cosecant squared. Okay, this would be one over cosine squared uh, divided by one over sine squared. Okay, division of fractions. Once again, division of fractions. I got one over cosine squared times uh, sine squared over one. Okay. So what that's going to give me is sine squared over cosine squared, which would just give me tangent squared. Okay, and then you can work on the other one and see the notes for that second problem um, in Canvas. Just wanted to show you that. Okay, don't want to just re keep replacing squared stuff. Okay, now with parentheses. Okay, all right. Here's the idea. You want to make sure anytime you have the parentheses ones that you want to multiply. Okay, all right, now, I did this example in class. If you multiply something like this, what we teach in math is to do the box, okay, if you wanted to do the box, all right, 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x, 2x, I'm sorry, that would be a plus, 2x times positive 3 would be positive 6x, negative 3 times that would be that. And then I would, you, what you do is combine the middle. Well, what would happen there? Those would cancel out, right? So what the shortcut is, is if you see something with the, uh, the same stuff, just a plus and minus, you really just have to multiply the first and the last. 2x times 2x is this, this times this is this. So the same thing with this one, okay? So that's going to be secant squared minus tangent squared. Okay, now, if I look up at my formulas, Okay, I see that this is just one. And that's how simple that one is. Okay. <clears throat> this one, I want to distribute this. Okay, so sine, uh, cosecant squared times sine squared. Uh, sine times that would be negative sine squared. Okay. All right, now, if I rewrite this, this is one over sine times sine squared minus sine squared. Okay, so that goes away. Now it's very important, that's a one there. 
So this is a one minus sine squared. Okay, so this didn't completely go away. It's one minus sine squared. What is this going to be? That is going to be cosine squared. Okay, that would be my answer. Okay? All right, you can pause your video and try these two. Okay, uh, I want to talk about these. Okay, all right, <clears throat> what we're going to do with this one. Okay, I'm going to handle this individually. So when I have the double fraction, okay, I'm going to pretend like this is a problem and this is a problem. I'm going to solve them individually. So that is going to be cosecant divided by cosine. Okay, that is going to be cosine divided by sine. Okay, we can use the face. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this one as one over sine theta divided by cosine theta. This one I don't think needs any rewrite. Okay. All right. Well, what do I have to do? We have division of fractions potentially. Okay. All right. That helps you. Okay. So what do I got to do? Flip the second one. So one over sine theta times one over cosine theta. This other one would be uh, uh, cosine theta times one over sine theta. All right. So what do I got there? That would be one over sine theta cosine theta. Bring down this minus. This would be cosine theta over sine theta. All right. So I solved them individually. Now, what do I have going on here? I have addition, I have subtraction of fractions. So this would need a cosine theta here. Okay. So what I got is I got one minus cosine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. Well, that's an identity. Okay. So I can cancel out one of those. So I got a sine theta up top and a cosine theta in the bottom. And what is that? That is T. Okay? All right. And then uh, last problem here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> all right. The cube. All right. What I got to do is I got to convert this. I can't do an identity. So sine over cosine minus sine cubed. All right. Uh, times 1 over cosine. Okay. All right, so I got sine theta over cosine theta minus sine cubed theta over cosine theta. Now, what operation do I have going on? I have a subtraction of fractions. I need a common denominator. I already have that. So when I push this together, this is what I got. Okay, so what's my issue here? I got to take out a sine theta. Okay, because that's a common denominator. So that's one sine squared over cosine. Okay. And now I know that that's an identity, okay? So that's going to be sine theta times cosine squared theta all over cosine theta, okay? And what I can do is cross off one sine theta, so that's uh, cosine. So sine times cosine. And that's good, okay? And then you can practice, okay? All right, this one, all right, on your own, all right? So you can go through and do those, all right? Um, it's going to take some work, but we'll keep working at this and, and practicing. You'll start to see patterns.